Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the World Most Dangerous Morning Show, The Breakfast Club. Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off, and we got a special guest in the building right now. His album came out on February 25th, God Don't Make Mistakes. Conway the Machine is here. What's happening? What's, What's happening? up, black man? One of the What's most up? requested, so we're glad we finally got to make it happen. That's dope, man. That's <laughs> dope. Thank you for having me up here. Absolutely. The album of God Don't Make Mistakes. They said that's your, your debut on Shady, so I always wonder, like, what were the other projects, like, from a king to a god? Like, what were those? <laughs> Shit, me just doing my thing, you right. know what I'm saying? I'm just, I was just, you know, staying busy, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to have, you know what I mean, a pause understanding and, you know, where I was able to just, you know, do my thing, man, and, and you know, keep my traction going while we figured out how to get the album out the right way. What's the difference between projects like that and a debut? Well, I mean, just my debut, just on Shady my Records, debut. you know okay, what I'm okay. saying? Like, I never, that's the first time dropping something on that label. You know, everything mm -hmm. else was on, like, Griselda Records or, you know, my label that I started. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So is the relationship with Griselda still there? I saw a lot of people weighing in on it, like, okay, he's not on Shady. Is he still with Griselda? You are Griselda, so. Nah, I don't mess with them dudes, man. <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. I know you're joking, because <laughs> it's on the album, and you want to push his album. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now nah, the relationship's still there. It's just you know what I mean. Um, I reached the end of my uh, you know, my paperwork, my terms. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, on my contract. So with this album, this was the, the the final piece to complete it. You know what I'm saying. So that's really all that is. It ain't it ain't it ain't no smoke or nothing. And I mean, I'm 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 still Griselda. You know what I'm saying. I right. I built that. You know what I'm saying. Me and Wes. You know we we collectively. You know what I'm saying? Put the put the work in and, and, and shaped and molded that from the ground up. So I'm definitely still still gang and you know and then at the end of the day that's family anyway, you know what I mean? That's my, my people. So mm -hmm. It was five years was before you put this album out on Shady. Yeah. And a lot happened since then. In five years, did that feel like a long time? Were you impatient? Like what was that whole period of time like for you as an artist? Um it was it was honestly it went by fast because I was staying busy. I was just so having so much going on on my own that I didn't even really pay attention. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of went like a blur. But you know, <clears throat> I don't know, man. I just you know I needed to get get cleaned up. As far as like getting some samples cleared and you know getting some some artists to to sign off some agreements and stuff like that. And you know, of course, you know that that stuff take time. And then it was other little stuff too. Like behind the scenes, and sh you know, I don't know. Can I cuss on it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Whatever you know makes what you feel comfortable. Um, but yeah, I forgot where I was going with he it. He said it was yeah. stuff behind the scenes. Yeah, it was it was stuff behind the scenes and shit, and you know, that was you know holding up the process and all that. But I'm kind of glad it did go like that because I was able to, you know, kind of build myself up. You know what I mean? Like get my name popping out here more. You know. And then the beauty of it, it was through my own hard work. You know what I'm saying? It was nothing like nobody pushed a button or like, you know, set me in motion. It was like I had to grind and get it out the trenches. So it's beauty in a journey. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Do you remember your mindset when you first signed the Shady? Like coming from Buffalo, a place that, you know, didn't didn't have a hip hop scene. When you first signed the Shady, what was your mindset? You like Man, I was I was ecstatic, nigga. I was I was I was in Miami and shit. I, you know what I'm saying? Well, we had been signed the paperwork, but the announcement didn't come up for like a couple months later before they made the announcement. And uh, so I was kind of like, I didn't really hit me until the announcement was made, until like Marshall put the shit on his page and all that. And uh, I just like, I ain't gonna lie, I dropped a little tear of success. You feel me? Because like, you know, coming where we come from, man, it's, it's you know, we kind of, it's kind of like we did the impossible. You know what I'm saying? And then the way we did it with the kind of music and shit we coming with and all that, like we ain't really like, we don't have like trend music and shit like that. Well, it's the trend now. Everybody's stealing my shit, but you know, we ain't really had that, you know, the things that I guess made like mainstream artists pop or whatever, or the shit that's played on the radio. Like we don't get no radio play or none of that. And like that part of it felt good. Like, damn man, we did this shit and we did it our way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it was it was a beautiful moment. You also have a great relationship with Kanye. Did you watch his uh, Genius documentary? Nah, I ain't get a chance to watch that yet, man. But um, I thought about. I gotta check that out. That y'all probably have a lot in common. Like, did you ever discuss? Cause you were in a life or death situation. So was he. 
And I know that has to affect people's lives and yeah. their mentality too. Did you guys ever have any conversations about that? Um, about that, actually, no. That's funny. That's crazy. That's I just now thinking. That's just now hitting me. Like we had a lot of different conversations and stuff, but never about like you know the the the, the obstacles, like you know with the accidents and shit we was in. We never talked about that. Um, that's fire. Yeah, but. I seen some clips of the other uh, 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 documentary and shit, and um, you know, a lot of people that seen that documentary and shit, and even the stuff I was seeing, it's kind of like it remind me of myself, kind of. You know what I'm saying? And anybody that know me personally, like you know what I'm saying? Like from like back in the days, like no, like that's the, that's the same type of shit I was talking. You know what I'm saying? And people used to really think I was bugging and crazy, like nigga, I'm gonna be. On top of the world with this shit. Watch, I'm gonna be on the cover of the Double of the, of the XL. I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna be the illest nigga. I'm gonna have songs with Jay Z. Watch, watch. I'm tell y'all nigga. I'm gonna show y'all nigga. Like I will be really telling niggas that. Mm-hmm. And shit, I got rejected a lot with my music in the beginning. You know what I'm saying and all that. But you know, I, I shit. I, I like to think I prove niggas wrong. <laughs> How did y'all develop a relationship? Me and Yeah. Honestly, man, I, I want to say. I'm not certain, but I want to say my nigga Hop Hip Hop um, put that together. Um, you know, Hip Hop been a friend of ours for a while since we've been. I met him just going to Alchemist's house all the time and, and seeing him there. And um, we was uh, we had a, we had a a show at the Novel. This was um, this was the last show. This was like right before the pandemic had started. And um, when I don't know if y'all seen the clips on Jay Z was there talking mm-hmm. to me backstage and stuff. Mm-hmm. So the next morning was was Sunday and uh, you know we we went to Sunday service out there in Cali, and and Ye seen us in the crowd and like after the service like called us in the back and you know introduced you know we chopping it up and talking with us and stuff and um just out of nowhere I don't know if y'all ever met Ye but Ye like man we should just we all sitting here right now we should just go to go to the studio and make some music right now. And that's what happened. And before you know it, I was out there for like a week with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then I went back again. And um, that's when we worked on Donda. I was out there for about a week and a half, two weeks that time. And you had, you had a lyric that you said, are you closer to Ye than Marshall? So what's your relationship with Eminem? Was it more business than personal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was more business. You know what I mean? I, I You know, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? Like... So I'd be kind of careful, but yeah, it was more business, and and rightfully so. That's how you know we, it, it, our relationship started. Like we don't even really have no, I guess, relationship like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, we spoke a couple times on the phone and stuff, and uh, you know, I, I, I kicked it with him a couple times at like Coachella and stuff like that. But um, you know, we cool. He cool. He good dude. He called me, told me my album was a classic, man, and he, he loved what I'm said. doing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, he. he I ain't got nothing bad to say about it. You so, feel me? Who, but you know, Yay and Hove and you know guys like that, man. They, they more you they know, embrace you in a different ish, way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And that's not to say bad about bro. Mm-hmm. He, he he held me down, man. Gave me this opportunity, this platform. I'm here kicking it with y'all. You feel me? So what made what made you do the deal then? Like if y'all didn't have a personal relationship. Me, I was just thinking about like. Um, the kind of engine that I wanted to have behind me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Of course. You know, think about, you know, my story and West story and everything that we've been through is like, of course, we all was inspired by the, the Get Rich or Die trying shit yeah, and yeah. 50, what he did with 50. So I'm looking at it like that, mm-hmm. like, all right, we know what he did with a nigga like 50, somebody that's been shot up, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, it's, it's risky music, you know, 50 shit to me was like a risk and a gamble like it was because he was on some you know he was on his bully on some bully shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like a lot of labels i don't know this for a fact but i'm sure it was like you know it was a risk like signing him and investing in him well, he was blackballed before exactly M&M you know what i'm saying so i'm looking at that like okay i seen what he did with that you know what i mean i'm thinking about man you know i'm about to have M, i'm about to have dre holding me down you know what i'm saying like nigga, it's a no-brainer type mm-hmm. shit and, you know, I know like Slaughterhouse was going through. They wasn't putting out really no music. I know Button had had fell back and shit. And I'm like, ain't nobody over there. You know what I mean? Because at the time, Rock Nation wanted us too. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, I don't know. We just like, man, fuck it. Let's fuck with. It. Let's let's go over there. You know what I'm saying? Let's do the let's do the let's do the deal over there. 
In hindsight, do you feel like that, that was the right decision? <sighs> yeah and no. Mm -hmm. Yeah and no. You know what I'm saying? If I'm just going to be honest, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because, you know, I got to be able to learn. You know what I mean? I got the lesson out of this shit. You know what I'm saying? I got the, you know, Eminem for me is like one of my favorite rappers all time. It's my son's favorite rapper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like some bucket list. I did songs with him. I, you know what I mean? I, I I could say I worked with Eminem and I'm a part of that that uh that chapter, that book. I got a chapter in that book over there. You feel me? Um. But what's the no? The no is I wish I would have just kind of just stayed and did it myself like I like I've been doing kind of without having to be tied down to no paperwork and you know that ain't nothing to say nothing bad to nobody but it's like I'm just looking back at it like shit I did a lot of this shit myself like all the relationships and everything I built I built myself just being a real nigga and just and hustling you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying everybody in the game fuck with me and, and, and fuck with my music and just everything that I'm about you feel me and I never got no handouts I never got no nobody never did nothing to kind of push that and facilitate that so it's like what the fuck am I signed for yeah. would you, you sign again saying? now that you're a free agent I, I'd have to be convinced <laughs> you know what I'm saying I, I would have to nigga gotta make me an offer I can't refuse and, <laughs> and do something show me he doing something that I can't do you know what I'm saying now you talked about working with and Kanye and I got to own it <laughs> you feel yeah. me so um, you talked about working with Kanye, and I know you've said he had those strict rules like no drinking, no smoking. <laughs> what was that process like for you creatively? Because I know you're used to going to the studio yeah. and getting the mood right. So how You smell like you got it on you right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did just, you write different, like creatively? How did it affect you? Honestly, it was fucking me up, yeah. I ain't going to hold you. Like It was tough the first couple of days. I, I, went, I, I, I laid a brick, man, those first couple of days because I ain't used what? to that. Yeah, it's like I ain't really used to that. And then I was working on, um, I guess what you, you call it, like gospel music or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I never really went to church and none of that in my life, kind of, you know what I'm saying? And um, So it was kind of tough, you know what I mean? But I just adapted and adjusted. And I, I really had to, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I, I really, like, had to challenge myself and talk to myself. Like, I, I sat up, no bullshit, like. I had some weed out there. I ain't gonna lie. I, <laughs> I swear, I, I just came from Cali. No, we had went to the, the Wyoming. ranch in Wyoming. Oh, right, 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 right. So you know, I had to you know tuck something in my pocket to get out there. So you know, I would sneak on the side of the house and shit or whatever with the cabin. And one night, I really asked myself, like, yo, do I really actually need to to have a drink or to smoke something to be ill? Like is my whole my shit predicated off a fucking drug or alcohol? Like and I ain't gonna lie, I threw that shit down. And and that's when the, that next day and that next day after that and the next day after that I I was knocking shit out. You feel me? You sure like, it wasn't some dirt and you just wanted to get rid of it? No, not coming from Cali, man. Okay. Shout out my man Big Burner. <laughs> oh, Big Burn holds me down out west. Word. But um yeah, I'm and I just challenged myself, like, let me see if I can still, you know what I mean, do my shit without without having a drink, without 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 smoking, without doing the things that I told my mind that I need to to, to get my shit done. You know what I'm saying? You know, in those hip hop uh when we having hip hop conversations and Griselda comes up, everybody knows Griselda is dope, but when we talk about like that next level, it's almost like yo, you, we know y'all would have to conform mm -hmm. in some way or or change the music up in some way to get to that 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 next level. And people always say, "Yo, Conway got the records. Conway got, you know, yeah. th those 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 I guess yeah. radio records." And I'm like, "Word, yeah. why, what? What's what's? Why are you holding them?" <laughs> the business, man. You know mm -hmm. how this shit go, man. The the, the music industry is, is is a motherfucker, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just say that, like, you know what I mean? Like, niggas be doing some real real crafty shit man like you know what I mean like shopping the records and shit around it's like it's hard to get I'm telling you man it's, it's it's difficult to get stuff cleared you know mm -hmm. what I mean when you're working with other artists and working with producers who want to you know they want to shit eat more than the artists you mm -hmm. know they want to be the artist you know what I'm saying and you know it's just difficult sometimes man you know what I'm saying so you just gotta you just something I gotta figure out how to navigate through you know what I'm saying you know Always heard you and uh you and Hitmaker had a had a smash. Yeah, yeah. We had a 
we got a couple. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got a couple, but again, that shit done got bounced around. You know what I'm saying? With the track? Yeah. Oh, okay. That shit got bounced around. So it's like, man, you know what I'm saying? I, I really don't know what direction to go to get the joint done and get it out. Get it, you know what I'm saying? It's like I'm getting pulled in every direction with that. So out of frustration, I kind of just put that shit on the back seat. Mm -hmm. Like, man, <laughs> let me Is go. that discouraging? Huh? Is it discouraging? Yeah and no. It's discouraging. It's disappointing because, you know, you want everybody to, you know, you want everything to go how you want it to go. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the time, you can't trip off that. You just got to, you know, plan B. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's all. But, yeah, we got a, we got something crazy, man. Me and Hitman, we got a couple. You know, I would love for them shits to come out. For real. Are you, are you scared to do that kind of music? Do you feel like your bass will be like, man, what what is... What is Conway doing? What's, what kind of music? Like what what radio music, uh, you know, yeah, music like, for ladies. I don't know. No, nah, I don't think that. I don't think uh, that'll be the case. I look at it like whether what what type of music it is. I don't look at music as types of music. Me personally, I just look at me going in the studio doing whatever I felt at that time. Like I don't have shit in. I listen to the, I don't even write until I go to the studio. So we mm -hmm. combing through beats and I yeah, load that up and that took me. So I got some songs like for the lady. I got shit, the radio shit and all that. You know what I mean? But so I'm not afraid at all to be, you know, to answer your question, like fearless and, you know, outside the box and none of that shit. Cause you know, I'm confident in, you know, what I is and, and I'm not faking. I'm not trying to be nobody that I'm not or, do something that I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I'm, shit, I'm me. Even when I'm on something, you nigga would say it's like a radio song or something for the ladies or some club shit or something. Like it's still, still me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you also have some really deeply personal songs on this album. Yeah. Like stressed. Mm -hmm. So when you put that song on the album, was there any hesitation? I know sometimes it's hard to give so much of yourself. Oh my God, Wallow. Um. Nah, it really wasn't. It really wasn't. It was probably I got a record called The Cow. That was probably more difficult than than this one. You know what I mean? Them, that record, like I actually was crying in the booth and shit, rapping it. And every time I perform it, almost and I like break down. I can't even get through the whole verse, honestly. And um, the stress record is kind of like that too. But I felt it was needed, and not even just for me. I think people just needed to hear that. I think people needed to see. Somebody that's cool as I am and fly with, with Margella jackets and shit on. To just talk about shit like that, like to unpack everything on the record. I feel like a lot of artists today hide behind a, a fucking, you know, a, a character. Like mm -hmm. on, It's like almost like, you know what I mean? We wrestlers, but some niggas don't know how to turn that shit off when they go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They all the time, you you... You macho man, Randy Savage, all the time. Like, when is you gonna be, you know what I mean? Like, these rap niggas don't be really knowing how to do that. And I don't mind being transparent and, and vulnerable or whatever niggas might call it. You know what I'm saying? I gotta give niggas my, that pain, me. There's other parts of my story, you know what I mean? Outside of the, the shit I did in the streets and the shit I've been through in the streets, you know what I'm saying? This shit that I go through on a personal level, you know what I'm saying? With, with my family, with, with, you know, my mental, you know, health and all that shit. So I want to be the one to, you know, advocate the awareness for, for mental health. Like, man, that shit cool, man. You know what I mean? The machine talk about it. I could talk about mine. What do you do I'd to love take to care be that guy. Huh? What do you do to take care of yourself outside of the music then? Uh, Charlemagne smelt it on me. Go <laughs> <laughs> plant-based medicine. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> um, nah, I just record. You, you know, go to therapy. I go to therapy. I go to therapy like once a week. I man. have went to some therapy classes, and I can't wait to. I can't wait to do it more. Mm -hmm. Do it more often. I did. I did a. I did that shit for like a week. It was something I was working on, like this. Uh, like this series that I'm working on that I'm doing with this. Uh, this therapist, Doctor Siriani, I think mm -hmm. that's his name. And um, yeah, man. And it was actually like real sessions. And we got to unpack a lot of things, and I, you know, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I felt, I felt good after, you know what I'm saying? And I wanna, I wanna, I wanna continue and go forward to, with that. But I, you know, I still wanna be the guy who say like, like how you said, man, shit, man, I, you go to therapy, it's all good, like you know what I mean? Like, 
it's all good, man. Black men, we got we we go through a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? In the hood, especially mm-hmm. as black dudes, man. You know what I mean? And it, we 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 taught to suppress. We taught to compartmentalize, or we look like suckers. You know what I mean? Like we can't. You know, we actually taught not to feel. Not to feel. It's like you raised a generation of sociopaths. Yeah, man. So, I'm I'm with I'm with all that, man. Getting ourselves like if you you got a toothache, you gonna go to the dentist. You That's know right. what I'm saying? So like if you got something going on, man, you know, go talk to somebody, and take care of that. In that week, what you think is the, the the biggest thing you unpacked? Uh, do 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 for me. Do what do what I want to do. Like do what make me happy. Like a lot of the things we talked about was like things like how every I be being pulled in every direction by a lot of people. Like whether it's you know the homies or the family or just niggas in the industry and all that shit. So people pleasing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like sometimes it's okay to please yourself. You know what I'm saying? And put everybody else second. You know what I'm saying? So that was the main thing I learned. You know what I mean? Because I I'm one of them niggas that I don't know how to say no sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's the hardest thing for me to do is say no. I feel bad even when I gotta tell them, motherfucker. No, I've been. I called him back. Tell me, yo, man, what's your cash at? Bro? Same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Same. Same. Well, like you walk by somebody and somebody want to take a picture. You like, oh, I'm on the phone. You yeah. Just thinking about it, like, oh, let me go take a picture. Like, you know what I mean? Could, yeah, yo, come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. Somebody ask you for some money, you be like, ah, oh, man, you think about it, but then you go do something for yourself, and you like, man, I just blew a bag over here. I could have just get, you know what I mean? Right. Ugh. Uh, why, why'd you put Wallow on Screst? What made you do that? I ain't gonna lie. Before I even met met Bro, I always used to just be scrolling his page and 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 like you know listening to the motivational, you know what I mean things he would be talking about. You feel me on the daily, like every morning. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know I just thought it'd be ill. It actually was gonna be a, a, a the intro like. Mm-hmm. I just wanted, I ain't even had no place for it. I was like, yo, just, you know what I mean, talk some of that shit on real quick. He sent that shit right back, like, feel me? And it was on the intro, but then I'm like, nah, I'm going to put this shit on stress. It'll be a little iller because it's kind of, kind of, you know, go hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, Wallow necessary. Yeah, his his Wallow, energy is boy, necessary. Man. Shout out to Wallow, man. Absolutely. Shout and out to are- Gilly. And you acknowledge the depression on the song. And sometimes people will tell you that like money doesn't make it better, it can make it worse, and success. How has that been for you, being successful, having money? Uh, success sucks, man. You know what I mean? It come with a lot of unrealistic expectations and just a lot of, you know, just just a lot of bullshit, man. More money, more problems, man. You know, you heard what Big said. It's just really what it is, and it kind of drive you to a, to a point of where you like, you get to questioning a lot of things. Like, man, do this shit all even matter? You know what I mean? It's been times where I told myself I was, I was man, I had more fun and was more happier when I was like sleep living at sleeping on Derringer couch and listening to them make beats on the MP and mm-hmm. rapping for nothing type shit. You feel me? Then to be in this in this music business, man, you know, you get a lot of fallouts with homies and. You know what I mean? And all type of just it's a lot of sucker shit in this shit. You get to falling out with family. People want to steal from you. People want to take from you. People want to take advantage of you. People want to put their problems and their burdens on you. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. the entitlement and just all that is just like, it just like, it fucks with you. You know what I mean? You got to be real resilient to to, to maintain longevity in, in this business. It's a fact. And it make you feel bad because you know you should have gratitude because this is what you prayed for. Right. And then you be feeling ungrateful. You Real know? talk. Like, sometimes I be thinking that shit like, damn, man, am I being just, like, unthankful for my blessings that I, that God put on me? You know what I mean? Maybe this is what my blessing is, like, to be in a position to give it all to everybody, put everybody on and give it all to everybody. And maybe that's what it, I, I don't know. I, I ask a lot of mm-hmm. questions to myself, you know what I mean? And that's one of them because... You know, and my doctor, you know, the doctors describe that as depression. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it come with it. It come with it. You know what I mean? You just got to be resilient, man, and just focus on your hustle. You know what I mean? I don't let what I'm going through impact my hustle and my grind. Like, fuck that. I got to keep going. I got kids, man. And I want to leave my leg. I want to leave an uh, impact here. Like, I want people talking about me like they talk about you know what I mean? Big and them niggas rock him and 
and Nas and Hov and them, I want to be in that sentence. I want to be in that too. You know what I mean? So like, if I gotta just put that shit in the trunk for a little more minute, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll be all right. You know what I mean? Does it make you feel like more of a target, the success? Yeah, well, yeah, of course. You know, you see rap niggas and shit getting killed and shit every day, robbed, shot, and all the type of shit. It's definitely a target. You know what I mean? Because you know, you you have something that people either a think they can't have or obtain ever. And B, just because you got it and they jealous, they don't want to see you with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you, this shit is crazy. You got to really move, move milly, man. You got to have your head on the swivel at all times, even when you just going to get a bite to eat with, a, with you know what I mean, with your kids. Like, you got to keep your head on the swivel. Like, for real, shit is just spooky out here right now. Do you, do you, do you find um, that the more you give, it still seems like it's never enough? Yeah, absolutely. You can't do enough for nobody. Mm -hmm. It's just facts, man. <laughs> you can't do enough. You never could do enough for nobody. You know what I'm saying? They're going, they going, the more you give, the more they're going to take. Mm -hmm. But like you said, I mean, God don't make mistakes. And right. there were so many right. times that you thought you wouldn't even be here. People right. told you you wouldn't be able to do certain things. Right. And it really is a miracle. Yeah, man. Yeah, it is. That's why I don't really trip. You know what I mean? Even when. I start tripping, I kind of catch myself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, man, like, am I really tripping? Like, look what I done did. Like, I ain't had nothing. I literally, you can, you know, you can ask niggas. I came from nothing. I ain't had nothing, you know what I'm saying? Especially after I got shot. Like, I had some shit going on in the streets before I got clapped, but after I got shot, a lot of people thought it was over for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I was going to be like a vegetable and, and just fucked up. So, you know, a lot of my money got stole and, I, you know, I got advantage took of me. You know what I mean? It took a lot of advantage of me. And then, so, you know, I think about that. Like, man, I came from having literally nothing to, you know, having it all in some people's minds. So, you know. The doctor said you would be paralyzed trip. from the, they said you would be paralyzed, right? When you got. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't, Um, it wasn't even, you know, it was because, like, the nerve damage. I couldn't move my, 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 my arms and my, I ain't had no feeling in my arms and my legs. But my legs, I couldn't move. I couldn't walk or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was that nerve. That nerve damage when I got shot, the bullet in my neck, that shit. And it was stuck in my neck for like a year and a half. So, like, I had real bad nerve. I couldn't pick this bottle of water up. I was take a sip. Damn. You feel me? Like, I was, I was fucked. That's what I'm saying. So, when I think about shit like that, I instantly stop tripping off. Whatever I'm tripping off. You know what I mean? Like, look at me. I'm walking and shit, talking, rapping, dropping classics, and you know what I mean? I'm giving back to the community. I'm telling you, this, maybe that's my purpose. And I ain't going to question it. You know what I mean? If that's what it is. That's what it is. Did that, did that, of course, that moment made you, you know, appreciate life more, but how do you see death now? Uh, I don't fear it. Mm. I don't fear it. I don't fear death. You know what I mean? Um, of course, we all want to live forever. And, you know, I got kids, so I definitely want to, you know, be around and, you know, see my kids, man. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Same. Grow up and do their thing. Uh, but I kind of like, I don't know, I've been living in a, in a, in a you know, a paranoia since then. Like, I've been having a lot of paranoia since then. Like, thinking about, like, is today going to be the day I get killed? Mm -hmm. I ain't going to even lie. Like, I think about that shit a lot. Every time I walk out of my house, I'll be checking behind my garbage can and shit, my driveway, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's fucked up that, you know, when, you, when you're when a rap nigga and you're successful at this shit, like, you got to move and think like that. And then it don't help that I already done been through that, you know what I mean? So it's like, I always be on my, on my head on the swivel, like, this shit could happen again at any moment. It's just a matter of when. That's PTSD. Did you, did you talk to the therapist about that? Nah, I ain't get a chance to. All right, all right. You know what I mean? You're going to keep going back, though, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Is there ever a time when you have... In the meantime, I just, you know, keep, my, keep, keep, keep moving militant. That's all. You Is there any I mean? time when you have those moments of peace, though, where it's no anxiety, no PTSD, just just those those moments, those pockets of peace? Uh, Rarely. It'd be rare. It'd be rare. Uh, it, it just, you know, when I'm burying myself in the work, 
it's just when I, you know, I, I kind of not like just not think about nothing but work. Like when I'm working and doing this music shit, that's all I think about. It's like, like Jordan or Kobe or one of them niggas in the gym and all that. Like, all I'm thinking about is the season. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I ain't thinking about at home. I ain't thinking about nothing else. I'm just thinking about man, this upcoming season and how I want to win a chip for the team, you know what I mean? So I kind of get lost in that to where I don't even have to deal with it. And again, I don't really give a fuck. Like, whatever is going to happen, happen. Like, I ain't, you know, ducking no wreck or, like, you know what I'm saying, living in a in a, in a, a place of fear mm-hmm. or, like, I'm coward or some coward shit. Like, no, nah, I'm, I'm fully prepared for whatever come my way. But at the same time, I just think about it all the time, like, all the time because I've been through it. It's just a matter of, like, when. Mm-hmm. And in a matter of if, unfortunately, for niggas, you know, from where we from that, you know, have some shit going on with this music shit, it's unfortunate that we became, like you said earlier, like targets. So it's like, you know, I, I just, pre- I'm prepared for it to happen instead of being unexpe- unexpectedly happening. You know what I'm saying? Like it did the first time. Like that'll never happen again. Which I don't, I would never understand because if you're from a city, that has never had that kind of representation. Why would you cut your nose off to spite your face by trying to take out somebody who's doing it? Like this person could probably be your lifeline out of the, the, the hood. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, true story. I mean, it, that shit come in the hood. It come with a lot of a lot of jealousies and entitlements, and a lot of time people think that because you made it is the reason I didn't make it. Type shit like your success is my failure. Type shit, you know what I mean? And you know, it, it'd be a level of saltiness. So you know, niggas are try to just you know, keep checking your temperature and, and the first load niggas already be harboring this this hate and this 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 these feelings towards you. So the first low 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 thing go left, niggas go crazy with it. Cause niggas been having that on them. So now they it just all the way took there. You know what I mean? When it was something so small and simple that could have probably been rectified or worked out. But it got took there because, you know, people harboring that shit, you know what I mean? Already just because you shining or you doing something that they ain't doing, which is unfortunate. But I feel like that's in every hood, every city, you know what I mean? My city love me. I don't, I don't have those, you know, no issues in my in my city, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But I still prepare and still, you know, I got to move around like how I move around because, man, this shit, I, I got to make it home, man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? All right. When you, when you think about the title of your album, God Don't Make Mistakes, other than the shooting, what personal experiences have you had that let you know that statement is absolutely true? Uh, man, just making it out of Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? With this, with with, with music or anything, nobody can really make it out, bro. Buffalo, like you know, in any field of entertainment or sports or whatever, like it ain't really been too many of us that you know had a shot because. We kind of so far off the radar that we don't really have the same resources and opportunities. Maybe, you know, people, talented people from other cities get to have, you know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? And just making it lets me know that. And then, like, you know, I've been through shit. Like, I've been through a lot. Like, I lost some friends. I lost family. I, you know what I mean? And for me to still be here and still resilient, man. And But I can't say other than because the shooting was the main part of it, Charlemagne. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, man, I got shot three and shot in my head and my neck, bro. I was told I wasn't gonna be able to do none of this. So for me to be sitting up here still doing this, man, and that's why I don't be tripping when you know I be reading like, you know, people be comment like when other people post shit, it'd be like niggas in the comment that never probably heard of me or seen me. What's wrong with his face, man? That nigga look crazy. The fuck that nigga. Is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like I don't really trip. Like if that's all I gotta deal with after being shot three times, like I in the head, neck, and the shoulder, bang, 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 and all I gotta deal with is some goofy ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like shit, I don't give a fuck about that shit, nigga. I can wake up in the morning, brush my teeth. I can still fuck. I can still hustle. You know what I mean? See count money. Work. You know what I mean? I can still drive these foreigns and, and count this money, man. I'm blessed. You you weren't pronounced dead or nothing, were you? Nah. But you was in like a nah. coma or? Nah. Damn. Nah. So you remember all of that pain for I what it was and shit. everything? Nah, I, I, I heard stories, like the stories my mom and, you know, my niggas and shit that was there told me. I remember that. I was fucked up in the hospital, but I, I eventually came to, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I wasn't in a coma and nothing. You know what I mean? I kind of got lucky because 
uh, I didn't really have to have no major surgeries and then the bullets kind of passed through and the only one got stuck in my neck and it was like right by my carotid artery and it was like too close to that Dang. shit for the doctor to try to surgically get it out or whatever. So he was hoping that the, the, the dead tissue and the scar tissue would kind of like push it up, have like a cocoon effect and just hold it there. Mm. I was he went, I was supposed to have that live with that forever. And um, I was just prematurely trying to get back in, in, in shape and stuff. I started trying to like like work out and stuff a little, like having people do is helping me work out and stuff a little. And I think me straining so hard kind of made that shit start moving. And then that shit was kind of like bul bulging out my neck, like poking out my neck. And when I went to like to the dot, like just to see him, my annual little trip, my weekly little trips or whatever, he touching that shit like nah, he just had emergency surgery, got it out. But it was just like a little incision, got that shit out. And I was good, but I just had the nerve damage. You All know right. what I'm saying? I could barely, I'm on a cane and shit at that time. And gradually getting my, you know, getting stronger where I can, you know, I can, uh, you know, I'm walking and shit. I went from like a wheelchair, then to like a walker, then a cane, and then trying to like, I just, man, gradually start being able to walk again, like holding myself up with stuff. I, you know what I mean? Like, be happy that was a milestone. Like, yo, I walk. I walked to the bathroom by myself, type mm -hmm. shit. Before you know it, I was walking to the corner store, though, you know what I mean? Slow, it'd take me 20 minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> to get to the block, but shit, fuck that, I ain't stopping till I get home. How was it for you to be reliant on other people during that time? I hated it, because I'm just always the type of person that I don't ask nobody for shit, I don't want no favors, I don't want nobody to do nothing for me, I'm stubborn. You know what I mean? I'm the type of person. Yeah, you ever see you see the commercials they got out where like they talk about uh um getting help. It's they like the dude get bit by a rattlesnake. <laughs> like, man, I'm good. <laughs> it's like it's okay to get help sometimes. Like I'm one of those type of dudes, like, man, I'm good, nah, I'm good. So like for me to have to be in a position where I had to rely on people to, you know what I'm saying, make sure I was good, like I hated that every minute of that. You know what I mean? It's crazy to even to think about those small things we take for granted. Like you said you couldn't even reach for a bottle of water. Word, I couldn't brush my teeth like, like my my aunt was, was brushing. I had to brush my teeth for me. Like of course, hold my hand here, hold it, hold it, demand up. She hold do my arm like this, and you know what I mean. I be trying to because I couldn't move my jaw, so it's spelling out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just that's why I don't trip off of nothing no more. Really, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's what drove me to the point to where I need to, like, you know, maybe I need to talk to somebody, dog, and get this shit off my chest because I kind of, like, put that shit in the trunk mm -hmm. because I was just so happy about just being here. Like, man, I know how bad I was fucked up, how bad I had it. So it's like, man, I can't tripping off of that other shit right now, but I see it starting to affect not only me but people around me. So it's like... And I just want to be the the person that that you know p push that on the hood, on the on the on the community. Like I'm one of them niggas now that niggas look at as like one of them top tier rap niggas that mm -hmm. niggas look up to and inspired by. So like I don't want to just always have you know the shooting and shit and all that in my in my rats. Other parts of my story, you know what I mean. I feel it's important that you know my fans need to need to need to hear and need to need to get that. And was you're that, not afraid to cry or discuss that either, right? Which is important because some people think that's not cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, man, they they think that shit. They think they suckers. And shit, man, you, the fuck you crying for, nigga? You know what I mean? It's you know, but again, man, we can't keep lying to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Or lying to our fan or to our family or friends or whoever around us. Like we putting on, we're no different than them niggas on WWE putting on a, a suit and going out there and pretending to kick and punch people. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't make me any different. You know, mm -hmm. and I ain't no shot at, the, at wrestling. I love wrestling. You know, that's my, my favorite pastime. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, like, what that's what we are as people. If we don't address that, we wearing a suit. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I say it all the time. If you don't deal with your trauma, eventually your trauma will deal with you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it definitely will, and it, and it, and it, it affect people around you that you love too, because now they gotta make decisions and shit on based on how they gonna continue this relationship and shit with you. Like, man, this nigga tripping. I don't know if I wanna fuck with him no more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, what I mean? for real. we be bleeding on people that didn't cut us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
Exactly. Well, so I mean, how many labels are trying to holler at you now? Because I'm sure that now that you're free and been putting out this music, everybody working with you, is there a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes? Yeah, yeah, some stuff happening behind the scenes, man. Everybody want to want to get in, uh, you know, get in that business with Conway, man. But honestly, man, I'm 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 hoping that uh, you know, things, you know, will work imse- themselves out with Griselda. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You know. What do you mean, like Griselda get a label deal or? Nah, uh, just me, just being more involved, like. I'm gonna keep it hunting. When I did, when we did that shit in the beginning, I really wasn't all the way. Man, I'm, I'm gonna keep it a bar. I ain't even read that contract, bro. I ain't even read that shit. I just signed that shit and moved on. And, you know, unfortunately, the contracts wasn't in my favor. So now going forward, that is, it's time for, you know, to re- redo all that. I gotta make sure if it's if it's in my favor now, like, you know what I mean? I'm gonna wave the Griselda flag regardless because I, I built. You know what I'm saying? I was hands on with that. You know what I'm saying? Me and West. So, you know, we can we can, you know, we can figure something out, which I'm sure we will. I, you know what I mean? But, you know, that's the first first person. That's the first situation I'm talking to is, is about is like, yo, West, what we gonna do? But you know, everyone's, made you on, the same, everyone's the on the same page now? Huh? Everyone's on the same page now, kind of like wanting everybody wants to work it out. Uh, I'm sure everybody want to work it out, but I don't know if everybody's, you know, been doing what needs to be done to get it worked out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, was it the money that made you sign without like getting a lawyer or anything? Or? I didn't or get trust? no, I didn't get no money. Oh, Shady didn't give you the money? Uh, some pocket change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was just me, just it. Not even with Shady. You know what I'm saying? With you know, I signed to, you know, I did three deal, three contracts with Shady and the Scope and Griselda. And you know, everybody able to, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. How, how how did that work out with you with your bros though? Cause it's like, cause they, I think I heard did I hear you and Wes are actually. Yeah, brothers? I mean, I have no idea how it worked out for them with them. You know what I mean? With everybody else, I just know what happened, how it went with me. Which, again, I'm, I'm okay with. I, I I could sleep at night. You know what I mean? I know what I did and how I kept it and how I rock. You feel me? You know now. You know it's the end. You know what I'm saying? We done drop some beautiful music. Let's continue. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sure we will. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. Like, that's, a, again, like, I'll be seeing, like, the headlines and uh, the tweets and, you know, people like, yeah, them niggas, I mean, uh, I just know it ain't no, really no smoke. You know what I'm saying? It's just the end of some terms that just need to be changed. That's all. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you trust people after all this, though? You I don't. A lot. I don't no more. You know? Nobody, <laughs> not even like Weston. Nah, I don't trust nobody no more. Damn, I don't trust nobody no more. I trust it to be all business. That's what I trust now. Mm-hmm. I trust me. I trust my my. If it all go right, it's my fault. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at shit. You know what I'm saying? If 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 it don't go right, it's because I didn't read it. I didn't. I wasn't involved. I didn't. I wasn't hands on enough. Mm-hmm. I, what what did I do wrong? I look at shit like that now. Like, what did I do wrong? What 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 what, what could I've done to made it better? You know what I'm saying? And again, like I ain't saying that to like, you know, like throw shots at nobody. Like it's all love. Like you feel me? You know what I'm saying? You gotta look out for yourself and do what's best for you. I feel like yeah. I feel like that's that's important now for me. I tried it the other way. I tried it the other way. And I got nothing out of it. You know what I mean? I uh, know no nothing. You know what I mean? People don't even know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, how involved I am in the whole Griselda shit and stuff, which, you know, it sucks, but I don't trip. Like I said, I don't trip off nothing. I'm alive, man, and I'm free. You know what I mean? I'm rapping beautifully still, and, you know, we'll work that out. It ain't nothing to work out. It's just, we worked it out. The paperwork done, that's all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it ain't nothing to work out. So did you get any money off all that music you've been putting out? Like, I mean, in the beginning, no. You know what I'm saying? No, I got, you know, like a lot of my money come from like my side hustles, selling mm-hmm. the merch and, you know, you know, doing little shows and features and shit from here and there. But, you know, no. It's so all that shit. I'm going to be honest. I don't get no money. So as many times as I listen to I Want You To Be Proud Of Me, that don't go to Conway? 
Oh, well, yeah, that, that, because that was, you know, I, I did that for me. Okay, okay. Yeah, I thought you was talking about, like, from those situations. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. You know, early on, too, when we was doing that shit, we ain't do a lot of, we ain't putting nothing on streams. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, none of, like, Reject 2 and Hitler, and Hitler 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all them shits, don't get scared now and all that. We we really, we built, that's another thing that's dope about how we got to this point and got T, because we, we kind of, we ain't even had no stream history or a whole lot of followers or views on YouTube or nothing. And so that's that was that's crazy. Like I don't think that get talked about enough how we did that and got deals, you know, assigned. We with Shady, we with, you know what I mean, all these people and we don't even got streaming history. So mm -hmm. I mean to answer your question, like a lot of those earlier projects, nah, we don't I don't get no we don't get no none of us do because we ain't it wasn't on no streaming stuff. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man. Just to, I'm gonna just say the paperwork really wasn't in my favor. Wait, wait, That's wait. all. You know what I'm saying? And again, I'm glad though because had I not went through that, I wouldn't. I still be on some shit, not reading paperwork. Yeah, you need that lawyer. Not trying to you be in the offices, <laughs> all that shit. Yeah. Now I'm. I, I got to be hands on. That's all. You know, on the uh, God don't make mistakes. You got the legendary Jill Scott on there on Chanel pearls. What, what made you want her to rap? I didn't. She wanted to rap. Wow. <laughs> yeah, she she was like, yo, she hit me, she called me and asked me, like, look, you know, questions about, like, how I grew up, my neighborhood and stuff, where I'm from, shit like that. And uh, she's like, yo, I hope you like it. I just, you know what I mean? You, you inspire me and stuff. Like, I just wanted to come like this on it. And I heard the shit. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She went crazy on that, man. Shout out to Jill Scott. She ain't have to do that, but she did that. And you got uh, Wayne and Ross on 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 a record. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, yeah, when, man. When you, Shout you, out to him. Shout you, out Rose. Do you send them the whole record with your verse, or do you just send them the instrumental, get their verse back, then write? Like, how did that process work? I sent them. The, I sent them the, the record with my verse. I had got. I got stuck. I really didn't even have no plans on having nobody on that. I kind of just like was going to kill the whole beat and then I kind of left like after my verse I felt like my verse was kind of long and then I put a little hook on there and shit just freestyling and fucking around and um excuse me and um I had did a, I did a song on Wayne's last album uh me and Benny was on Wayne's last album and then we did uh his podcast uh and he was like, man, you know, at the end of the party, yo, y'all need anything, bro? You need me? Uh -huh. I'm like, shit, nigga, I'm about to send you something right <laughs> now. That you mentioned it. That <laughs> you mentioned it. Yeah, I sent him that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, as we was waiting on, you know, things to get cleared and all that shit with the fucking, the, you know, the, the album, I ended up, you know, bumping into Rosé and, you know, building a rapport with that nigga and just, you know what I mean, showing me love like that. And it was the same thing, like, yo, I got a joint and I'm like, yo, you know to be ill, I have Wayne and Rose on this shit. So I had Chad uh send him that joint. And uh shit, he sent it back the next day. You know what I'm saying? Do you think sometimes you might be competing against yourself? Cause you drop Greetings Earthlings same week as the album God Don't Make Mistake. Yeah, yeah, I am. You know what I mean? Sometimes you know what I mean? You know how you know how they say in the captioning, man, my only competition is myself, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. It's just me trying to stay busy, man. Like, you know what I mean? I, sometimes I be feeling like, I be feeling slighted. I be feeling like niggas don't respect this shit enough, A, or not enough people is aware and know what I'm doing. Like, ain't, and then, I ain't did enough yet. Let me go. So the idea with that was like, I wanted to, I wanted to just, you know, get back to just the bar, like just smoking niggas, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just, F flooded like flood like on some Wayne. Mm -hmm. What year is that when Wayne was going crazy? You know like old, old every four. time you turn no around, one did it like that. A, you see what I'm saying? Right, nobody never did it like that. So for me, to I was just trying to patch into that. Like, yo, I'm about to have a year where I'm just going crazy on everything, everything. I'm gonna leave it all on the court. You know I remember saying? people tried to tell him he was oversaturating and it wasn't right. a good marketing strategy, but it worked and out. Look, and look how it worked for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I probably, you know, won't do it to the to that uh <laughs> level of where he at, man. Honey shit's out. But 
I'm definitely I'm about to, I'm on their ass this year. Is that why you gave B Dot a little shot on 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 the Tanner talk? Nah, V Dot, my man, man. I was just, <laughs> you know, I was just getting, you know, a little a, a little jab, man. You feel me? He had you on the list. He had you at number five. Absolutely, <laughs> it was which was egregious in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, shout out V Dot, man. I love you. It's my I dog. You. I ain't gonna lie, B Dot, my dog, man. I saw you also said you wanted to work with Young Thug and Dre. So since you put that out there, yeah. sometimes you throw it in the atmosphere. Throw it and out comes there. Back. Next time you had Thug up here, man, tell him like, "Yo, man, like a crown, we trying to patch in, man. Mm -hmm. Let's get us one Thug. You know what I mean? The whole team, the whole family, man. Mm -hmm. I love what them niggas down there doing YSL, man. That's it was like some of my favorite niggas to watch right now in the industry. Like, you know, Thug putting his niggas on. Mm -hmm. Them niggas having money. Them niggas having fun. It was just, you know, I just love to see. And I know the type of, you know, background and what them niggas is about. So to see them doing it like this now, man, it just, you know, you see the growth. And, you know what I mean? That shit dope. Them niggas bossed up, man. And I just, I salute that. I never met, I met Thug one time, you feel me? But it's not like, you know, that's my man or... I just genuinely fuck with what, what, what the bros down there doing, man. And shout out to them niggas. Thug, send Conway a DM, man. You know Make saying? that happen. <laughs> send me a joint. <laughs> send me a record, baby. I got I got a few more questions. Your label. Mm -hmm. What's the name of it? Drumwork Music. Drumwork Group. Music. Yeah. And, and I know you got one of your artists in there now. Yeah, J Skis in here. Okay, J yeah, Skis. Yeah. And there was rumors you might sign Beanie? I think I was hearing that. Nah, yeah, you probably was, but I don't know where that rumor came from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe people seen like the pictures and... The videos and clips and shit that I saw, you know what I mean? I don't know if we, we never had no discussions and talked about, you know, that. But, you know, we definitely spent some, you know, a couple of days and locked in the studio and got some records and shit done. And, you know what I mean? We definitely discussed other plans and for the for the future, for the year. And, and again, like, I mean, if that's what he want to do, man, shit, my house, he, he shit, the door is open, baby. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, I got a lot of respect and admiration for, for Seed, man. And, you know what I mean? He's like a big bro. You know what I mean? He came through, he's solid. And, you know, I fuck with that. I fuck with that. And whatever he want to do, man, I'm with. But, nah, that, that that's, you know, we, we, had, we never talked about that. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do some more music and shit, though. Mm-hmm. And how important, man, you know, I, I never met the brother. I just always read about him. DJ Shea. Yeah. How important was he to the Griselda movement? Um, Shea was just important to just us, period. As like just, you know, Conway and Benny and, you know, Wes. Like we was just as us before the movement, before the Griselda thing, any of that. Like Shea was heavily just inspirational and, and, and impactful in our lives. Like he took a lot of us in when we was young and with no direction and we ain't even know how to, you know, be, man. A lot of us was just becoming adults, you know what I'm saying? A lot of us was just becoming fathers. Um, just, you know, he just kind of took niggas in. His studio was like, we're like a sanctuary for us. We'll go, we can just record, we could just, you know, it was like a safe zone. We wanna, when the block was slow or we wanna just, you know what I mean, the block hot, and you know we want to get out the way. We all his door was always open. You know what I'm saying? My baby mama kicked me out of some shit. I can always go stay on a uh, Shea couch. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At the studio, and he gave that to us. And he just loved every artist in the city. And you know he really went to his grave, man. Like pushing that. You know what I mean? Conway, Benny, and Westside, man, is the the, the illest shit ever. And you know it's fucked up, man. He went out the way he did, man. And, and rest in peace to Shea. He was a big part of uh, of us. How did it impact you personally? Oh, man, I, I was fucked up, man. I cried like a baby. I ain't going to lie. But, you know, I kind of, like, got over that shit real quick because I knew, I know Shay Like, Shay don't want me down here on that type of time. Shay just want me doing what we're doing now, what Benny doing now, having number one albums in mm -hmm. hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? And dropping classics and doing deals and shining and having money and living out our dreams. That's what he wants. So not us crying and sad and giving up on life and, you know, throwing in the towel. Like, nah, he wants us to keep pushing and keep putting on and prove that he was he was right about how, what he felt about us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I wanted to ask you this earlier. This is my final question. It's like, you know, after the shooting, how hard was it for you to let go of not wanting revenge or retribution for, for uh, that that anger. How how hard was that to let go? Um, I'm gonna 
gonna be honest, bro. I really didn't have no, I didn't have no heinous, nothing heinous in my heart. Honestly, you know what I'm saying. I really didn't. I didn't even feel that. I didn't even feel that. I just like, I was too focused on the come up. You know what I'm saying. And I was just too, too thankful to even be able to still. Man, I'm still here. You know what I mean. When I heard about. You know, I'm wake. You wake up and come to, it and you you realize, yo, you hit where you hit at, and then you grab the mirror and you seeing your face and all that shit. It's like, you know, it's, you definitely had you know some thoughts, some dark thoughts and all that. But you know, I I really didn't have that, Charlotte man. I really didn't feel nothing heinous in my heart towards nothing or nobody. I was just too focused on, you know what I mean, to get the comeback. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Or that's probably that's why you blessed now. Cause if you'd have held on to that, yeah. who knows? You might have tricked yourself off the street or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with Conway the Machine, man, God don't make mistakes is out right now. Good to finally build with you, bro. Absolutely, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate y'all for having me up here. I Absolutely. know we've been trying to get you up here for the longest. We've been missing each other. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, it's all good, man. Timing is everything. <laughs> God don't make mistakes. You At feel all. me? It's Conway right the Machine. Now. The Breakfast Club. Thank you.